the MPC and C Primo. I wanted to take videos along the way, but I just got too excited and I just wanted to get this thing built. So uh, this is going to be an upgrade from the Burley machine that I had. And I just want to talk about some of the changes I've made and how this, how this machine is going to be a little different than my Burley setup and uh, just kind of talk about the build process and what my thoughts are so far. I just wrapped up some cable management here on the motors. So I thought now would be a good time to talk about my build thoughts and uh, just kind of some of the changes I'll be making here. So we'll get right into it. Uh, the biggest change here on from this build to my old build is that I'm now using one inch steel here instead of the three quarter inch conduit. Um, as many of you know, this is the only build available for the Primo right now. And uh, I know Ryan is working on the other two sizes, but I saw this as an opportunity to upgrade. I got the steel from my local, um, my local metal shop here. And I think it was about 30 bucks for the entire uh, two sticks. It's, it's very reasonably priced, at least where I live. And uh, almost, it's almost cheaper than the conduit for my old build. So I kind of wish I would have done this with my old build. But uh, this is just mild steel. And I have a buddy that um, has some blackening acid. I do not know what it's called. I apologize. But we well, basically what we did was we cleaned the mill scale off these with some vinegar. And then we coated them with this blackening coating. And I'll just kind of get in here a little bit. And basically this is going to let, this is going to be a rust inhibitor for the steel. Uh, I'm not going to say it is going to eliminate 100% of the rust, but it will be much easier to manage uh, over the life of the machine. So uh, after putting it together here, I can already tell that this thing is a lot stronger than the conduit build that I had before. And I, I don't even have it dialed in yet. I haven't ran it yet. But I mean, just, just building this thing together is, it's just way more sturdy. I mean, uh, just on the legs here, nothing moves, wobbles. I've been very, very impressed with the, the rigidity of the machine so far. So uh, that was the biggest change. Uh, another change I made was I lowered my Z height by two inches. I will not miss those two inches. Uh, my original post or my original machine, I I thought, oh, I want four inches of height, and then therefore I can mill a four by four if I ever need to, and that never happened. So I have lowered the machine uh, two inches total. I'll just get some angles here. And uh, so therefore I will hopefully have a much more rigid machine on that end as well. Uh, I'm also using the actual uh, steel here. And on my old machine, as you'll see in my other videos, I had some 3D printed adjustable legs here. And I am not using those. I didn't realize how wobbly they were until I tore the tore the Burley machine apart. And so I I wanted to use those because I thought it'd be an easy way to level the, the machine. But here, I think these are going to be... Uh, I, I, I had, uh, had my wife help me here level the machine. So I think we're going to be okay now. I haven't made any test cuts yet. But I'm actually going to be using the steel, uh, the steel uh, legs this time, this time around. So, uh, so that's an upgrade as well. Um, let's see. I'm actually following the infill um, recommendations from Ryan. So uh, my old build, I think I went with like 10 or 20 percent infill on the whole machine. I just didn't think it would matter. But instantly pulling off, you know, all these parts off the build plate, I immediately saw an improvement so uh, let's see here lower machine I also have about oh I don't know two inches less on the Y and two inches less on the X uh, and that's just maybe an inch and a half um, and that's just the differences between the uh, Primo build and the Burley build my the, the corner clamps here are a little bit bigger and so when I cut my pipes to the same length, the entire build shrinks, if that makes sense. And so uh, I've never had an issue with a too big a stock getting in here, you know, too big of, of a, a plywood or aluminum. And so I don't think I'm going to miss that space either. So uh, overall, the build, 
I think was just as easy as the burly build. Uh, it definitely wasn't more difficult. There are some less finicky parts. Um, for example, uh, I know on the burly build, there was a part that would go in between the plates in the middle. That's no longer there. It's now incorporated into the, uh, the part here, the part that hugs the, the conduit here, or the, the steel tube, I should say. So that's kind of nice. Uh, the core is all one piece, so it's definitely a lot easier to print. And uh, well, I shouldn't say print, it's like a 36 hour print. <laughs> uh, that'll put your printer to the test for sure. But I do think it is a better design, it's easier to put together, and I think it's arguably gonna be stronger as well. So um, let's see here, what else? I am gonna have to figure something out here with my cable management up top. My uh, my cable chain mounts are obviously different now on my Y axis here. So I'm gonna have to figure something out there. I have now routed the cabling through the tube here. Sorry if you use the wobbly camera here. Um, I've routed my cables through the tube here. Now I do have 110 going through the tube here and I have thought about grounding this machine just to kind of cover my butt here, uh, just in case, you know, I don't know, something I thought about, something I'm gonna look into. So um, let's see here. So I gotta figure out the cable chain here. Um, if this ends up working out, I know it's not the prettiest in the world, but if it ends up being low enough maintenance, I will probably just leave it to be honest and kind of keep things a little simple. So um, let's see here, what else? I'm still using the full size Rambo board from the old build. And so, Nothing new to talk about there. Same motors from the old build as well. Um, one thing I do want to look at doing is getting this outside of the enclosure. I had a lot of comments on my older videos about people saying, hey, you know, you should get this e-stop outside the enclosure. And I totally agree with that. Uh, so not only will that be a safer option, and not only from my safety, but the machine safety as well, but I also think that... Um, it will clean up the wires in here a little bit, and that's something that I have to do as well. So, um, like I said, I haven't fired it up yet. Probably do that later this afternoon if all goes well. So I got my uh, limit switches here uh, mounted okay. They mount, they thread right into the plastic. Got my stops here, so I got to get those dialed in again. The belt here, I thought was a pretty Pretty nice design. I'm sorry for the camera shake here. Um, so this insert here goes, the belt grabs onto it and then you put the insert in and then on the other side here, it's, you like, you tighten that insert this way and each side has that. And so I thought that was a much more, um, I don't know if elegant is the word. I don't mean to bash the burly at all, but I do think this is quite the upgrade from the burly as far as the belt tightening system here. So it makes it a lot easier to tighten the belts as well. So um, we're pushing eight minutes here, but I just wanted to make a video on the Primo here and kind of share my thoughts. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment here and subscribe if you like. I do plan on making more videos on the Primo here. So um, I got some keyboard content on the way too. So. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching everyone and we'll, we'll see you around. Thanks.